Welcome to the Va Policella in northern Italy, a wine utopia full of precious treasure. In ancient times, these lands were visited by people of note, from poets to emperors, to take part in legendary wine tastings. The region is most known for Amarone della Va Policella, considered one of the world's greatest wines. But how it came to be is shrouded in mystery. So, Get ready for a rare look inside one of the world's most coveted wine regions, the Vapolicella. I'm Tony Margiata, and you're watching Italy's Best Kept Wine Secrets. Veneto is a region in the northeast of Italy that stretches from the beaches of the Adriatic Sea to the pointed peaks of the Dolomites. It's named after one of the most fascinating cities in the world, Venice. The Veneti people have been inhabiting this part of Italy for over 2,500 years. But people have been thriving here long before that, spanning back to the dawn of humanity. One of the earliest archaeological sites of humans can be found in the Fumane Cave 60,000 years ago in the Valpolicella of Veneto. As people went from hunter-gatherers to farmers at the end of prehistory, the Arisnate people of Etruscan Rhetian origins inhabited the Valpolicella because of its fertile lands. Findings from the 7th to the 5th century BC dating back to the time of the arrival of the Etruscans and their meeting with the Arisnates attest that in this area the fruit of the vine was already transformed into wine. Historical testimonies also report that in the 2nd century BC to the defeat of the Cimbri by the Roman legions was due to the attractive products of the Rhetian grapes contributed in a decisive way. Specifically, in the territories north of Verona, there were wines appreciated by Virgil, ancient Rome's greatest poet, and Strabo, a Greek geographer, and it would appear that the Rhetian wine could be considered an ancestor of the current Valpolicella wines. Some wine amphora dating back to Roman times, still intact, were found in San Giorgio in Salici during the works for the planting of a vineyard. In those ancient times, the cultivation of the vine was developed and in the province of Verona, the Rhetian grape was produced. The great Roman poet Catullus, originally from Verona, was the author 
of immortal poems and drowned the pains of love with a good Rishin wine. Catullus's father offered this wine to Julius Caesar as his guest at Lake Garda. Even Pliny the Elder, the Roman naturalist, appreciated it. He wrote sometime between 29 and 70 AD about eating at the table the dried Rishin grapes from a field in Verona. Another Latin writer, Suetonius, said that the wine of Verona was greatly appreciated by the Emperor Augustus. And Strabo said that it was among the most praised in Italy. All of these accounts paints a picture that the area around the Verona province, Lake Garda and the Vapolicella had fertile soils, good climate and delicious wines made with dried grapes. And while the references to Rishin wine seem to infer a sweet red wine made from dried grapes, and the Romans did love their sweet wines, it's logical to assume Recciotto della Vapolicella, a sweet red wine made from dried grapes, is a direct descendant and considered the ancestor of all the Vapolicella wines. Recciotto derives from the Venetian word reccia, referring to the ear. The top part of a Corvina cluster, known as the ear, had the sweetest grapes and only those were used for making high quality Recciotto. So was Riccian wine always a sweet wine? Some evidence tells a different story. And the great wine Amarone della Vapolicella may provide some compelling insights. Today, the Vapolicella has a thriving wine industry and one of Italy's most important wine regions. The Vapolicella is not a city. It's a place located just north of the city of Verona and just east of Lake Garda. It's actually a large valley with many little valleys inside of it. The name Vapolicella derives from the Latin words Valis Policelle valley of many cellars. The Romans conquered the area over 2,000 years ago and it appears they named this place after something important. The name indicates the Vapolicella was a thriving wine production area since before they arrived, reaffirming the evidence of a thriving wine culture before their arrival. There are few places in the world whose name can be derived directly from wine. What did the ancient people know about this special place? A group of scientists recently excavated an area in the Vapolicella where they discovered prehistoric grapevines and grape pollen several layers below the ground. After an analysis, the research concluded these vines and pollen were 6,300 years old. They also discovered there was a period of about 3,000 years that the people inhabiting this area were farming and thriving from these lands. This was all done before the Roman period. It's likely there was already a thriving wine culture in the Vapolicella and that the Romans perfected the farming and vinification techniques. Today, there are two main areas of production for Vapolicella wines. There is the Classico subregion and the Vapolicella subregion. The Classico area is the original historical area of production, while the Vapolicella is the extended area that came later. Why the two areas? The Classico zone is made up of more rugged terrain, high elevations, steep slopes with rock, marl, and skeleton soils. The area is much harder to farm and demands strong and highly skilled labor to cultivate the land. The Vapolicella extended area rests on flatter land, making it feasible for heavy machinery to industrialize the land and machine harvest the grapes. Not always, but oftentimes, you'll find the big industrial wineries 
in the extended Vapolicella for this reason. The extended area really came about due to the success of wines coming from the classical zone, which is very restricted and cannot expand. More demand for Valpolicella wines necessitated this extended area. That's why you'll see some Valpolicella wines containing the word Classico on the labels while others don't. These are small details, but they give you a clue as to where the wine comes from. There are five communes in the Valpolicella Classica. Marano, Negrar, San Pietro in Cariano, Sant'Ambrogio, and Fumane. The classical designation can't be found on the wine label unless the wines come from these five communes. I went on a trip to the Fumane Valley to get a closer look at the Vapolicella family of wines, like the Classico, Classico Superiore, Ripasso, and Amarone della Vapolicella, considered today as one of the world's finest wines. The name Fumane likely derives from the Italian word fumo for smoke, referring to the clouds that envelope the hills after a storm. It's the Fumane Valley where I discovered a hidden gem winery producing a treasure trove of magical wines, the Ugolini family estate. But as you'll soon see, the Ugolini wines are so much more than just delicious drinks. And once you've discovered those secrets, you may never taste wines the same way again. As the popularity and demand for Valpolicella wines grew throughout the world, the big wine houses had to industrialize their production methods to keep up with the demand. As production levels grew, the quality of wines began to fall. At the peak of this industrialization of mass-produced wines, Angelo Ugolini, the original owner of the estate, passes away, leaving his wife and children to take over the family business. It was his son, Giambattista, that took the reins to lead the estate into the future. This crossroads of mass-produced wine and the passing of his father and Giambattista's passion for nature, the arts, and traditions he made a decision in 1996 to convert the estate to organic farming. Now today, organic wine is commonplace, but in the mid 90s, it was a revolutionary decision in the Vapolicella. The neighboring wineries thought he was crazy to go back to using more natural and traditional farming methods, but it turned out to be the right decision for the long term. Giambattista Ugolini just might be one of the first terroirists in the region, not only because of organic, sustainable farming, but also because he devised a crew system for the Vapolicella wines at the estate. So every wine expresses a snapshot of a specific vineyard breathing life and character into the wine. And we'll be taking a deeper dive later into those wines including an Amarone single vineyard crew. In questo video cercherò di raccontarvi in 5 minuti 30 anni di lavoro. Non sarà semplice, però volevo veramente trasmettere quella che è la nostra filosofia in vigna, il nostro modo di essere e di operare. Questa è la mia valle, è la valle di Fumane. Come dico sempre io, è la nostra anima, è il nostro sogno questa valle. Dove però siamo fortunati perché è facile fare viticoltura, perché qui abbiamo le, le perfette condizioni climatiche per la vigna. Ecco perché qui, a 300 metri, da dove sto parlando ora, 
c'è una villa romana dove negli anni 60 degli archeologi hanno scoperto questa Pagos romana, la, la cantina più antica che si è visto del primo secolo. Ci sono delle, delle canalette di terracotta per portare l'acqua calda sotto alle vasche per iniziare la fermentazione. Cioè, qui in questa valle facevano già il vino nel primo secolo, appunto per questa bellezza di questo clima, microclima mediterraneo. Questa valle prosegue, entra direttamente nelle Alpi, che ci regala questa magnifica ventilazione e questo sbalzo termico notturno, perché qui alla notte, alla sera, anche in pieno agosto, c'è freddo. Dai 30-35 gradi giorno ai 15-20 gradi notte. Dico, per, immaginate per i profumi della vite e per le malattie è perfetta. A, a un chilometro da qui, a nord, non viene più l'olivo. L'olivo non riesce più a vivere e a vegetare. Voi sapete che l'olivo è l'emblema del clima mediterraneo. Questo grazie a cosa? Grazie al più grande lago italiano che abbiamo, che è il lago di Garda, che grazie a questo vento, che noi in dialetto veronese è il vento del Pelar, che è un vento costante, ci porta questa, questa brezza calda, in contrasto ai venti freddo del nord, dove qui la vite e l'olivo vegeta in maniera spettacolare. Questa valle è una valle fluviale, dunque i terreni del fondo valle sono tutti terreni dove siamo qui ora di detriti, di sassi strappati alle rocce nei secoli, mentre le dorsali sono entrambe di origine vulcanica, grazie a due vulcani, la Fumana, che ha condizionato le nostre cinque vigne, e a Santa Maria Valverde, che ha fatto la dorsale est di questa valle. Noi abbiamo cinque vigne, dove facciamo cinque vini, un po' il sistema cru, Ogni vigna ha il suo vino e dove la corvina, che è il nostro vigneto principe, cresce su cinque terreni differenti. Passiamo dall'argilla alla manna, che è il cacare bianco, che è il minerale migliore per la viticoltura. Passiamo al tuffo, passiamo alla pietra lastolare, dove la nostra corvina riesce ad andare giù in cerca di acqua, a rompere le fessure della pietra. Ecco perché noi siamo spettatori in vigna. Infatti il nostro lavoro è guardare e cercare di non rovinare ciò che la natura ci regala. Noi combattiamo ogni giorno per portare tutto in equilibrio.